Hello everyone, welcome to to Trady. So today I'm going to be like um, explaining how I created and uh, rigged this um, Family Guy character Stewie Griffin. So basically, what you need to do is my rules for creating characters like this is because these characters are a bit um, are, are done with um, frame by frame sort of in some cases, not really frame by frame per se, but um, some of the actions they do uh, kind of drawn frame by frame they are not moved around like that so i would say stick to cycle layers for this particular kind of characters always use cycle layers so one of the things i do is i create um, the eyebrow i make it frame by frame i make all the hands hand movement all the hand gestures that the characters will be able to make i make them in cycles and they how I, I make them in um, layers so um, so so that I can use cycle layers and uh, behavior in the future, like when I come to rigging. So the hands are cycle layers, the eyebrow, the um, mouth, okay, not the mouth actually, but just the eyebrow, the hand, just put that in mind. So after drawing the story character, after drawing the whole character, what I did was I went in, drew all the facial um, triggers that I will need, like his angry position, um, eye, angry eyebrow, angry eyes, um, um, happy, um, surprise, all those facial features that I need to, needed to draw. So I drew them and placed them in the head um, layer, under the head layer. And then now I came to the hands and that was what took me a long time actually. Creating these characters are easy, but the the most um, life draining part of it is uh, creating the hands, which is we took me like days and so I think it took me like one, even though it was not like I was doing it throughout, it took me like a day or so. So you create the hands and you create every single po position or every single um, posture is going to make him with his hands. So and that's basically it. So now I went into the rigging process and this um, what I'm, that's what I'm currently doing right now. So after dragging the character into the timeline, you know, um, double click the character, blah, blah, blah. Like I added camera just to adjust it so that the character is only in the bit so that you can see everything. Then now I'm here trying to do the face. All you need to do is drag the entire <coughs> brow and create a swap set. And then now for every single layer that um, that has um, maybe uh, that is supposed to be cycle layer, you add a cycle layer behavior. You add a cycle layer behavior to it. So um, like for the eyebrow, the eyebrow for instance, the eyebrow is supposed to move from one position to the other, and there's a, there's like an in between that I created for those eyebrows. So what I do, what you have to do is to select those and create a um, cycle behavior and cycle layer, add a cycle layer behavior and then make sure it's set at um, two. So it skips, um, it, it, it changes per every two frames and then um, you make it to reverse and hold at last. So that's basically it. And then now you come to the rigging. So now I'm rigging the leg, you make it large. Um, you, I, I said you make it large. Um, you. You make a hinge and then you fix whatever you do not want it to move you, you add a pin there so basically it <laughs> the video is a bit fast that's why i'm trying to catch up with it so it's a bit um, uh, difficult to do but okay this is like a time lapse kind of thing so i'm just trying to um, put a voice over over it so that at least i'll explain certain things that you could actually do to make a very good character like this so <clears throat> basically the hands to just i'm doing this just so that I can make the character work, which um, which is not necessary. But uh, I just want it to. I just want the character to work, so it's stay fine. And you don't have to make your character work, or you could do that frame by frame, which is fine too. I, I would actually do that in a future tutorial, where um, I'll make the character work frame by frame, like manually make the character work. This is for special characters, like if you want the character to, if you want the character to embody a particular kind of work that. Um, eh, Okay, anyone shall. Anyway, now back to what we're doing. So I've worked on the eyes, and if you notice the eye, the iris that is the 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 iris is um, still over the eyes, and that's what I'm about to fix here. So you just um, create a mask. You max that layer to the eyebrow to, to, to the iris, just so that um, when the eye closes, it closes the iris too. So now you see the iris is behind now, sort of. Okay, so now I've done basically all the facial emotions and the hand, the, the character is working fine and everything. So now I'm going to the hands. 
so now we're about to make the hand so i started with the arm a and my i created a bit i made a unique kind of way of um, rigging hand so just ignore all that all you need to know is um all you need to know is you drag the entire hand cycle layers that you've created my own is a bit complex because i actually added an in between as a separate uh, layer completely this is to make my work easier when i'm really creating character but all you need to do is to create each of the cycle layer as one so from the start position to the end position you make it in one cycle layer one cycle layer unlike mine that uh, is just the, the start and the end and then there's an in between that i added so i have to rig all these things together i have to add them all in one layer under the swap set it's a bit complex but i'll come to that i promise i'll make a tutorial about that i've been really busy of late if not i would have done that already but uh, it, this is like a game changer for me I, I don't know how impressive it will be for you or how useful this feature will be for you but for me it's a game changer because now it's easier to make characters it's easier to like uh, update characters change whatever i want to change because now i only have to deal with the first and the last layer and then work on the in between separate and the in between are being the in between are repeated, which is why I do this. This, which is why this is very impressive, because the in between are repeated. In most cases, when your hand move from one position to the other, the in betweens are mostly almost similar, which is why I just re reuse the same in between and just create a first and last um, layer. I understand. I'll come back to that eventually in a future tutorial. But so far, we can see that the hand the first the sorry the hand a is working fine so it's just to replicate the same thing on the and b um but in my own my own character is supposed to like his hands are supposed to be able to come like the arm a you see the arm a is b and b is behind the body but it's supposed to be able to come in front of the body and in some cases it's supposed to even be able to come in, up on the face and the, if you notice the arm a and the arm b are behind the head which um, in character animator is a bit difficult to make uh, the hand to come in front of the face but i have a solution for that all you need to do is to create a separate layer of the same hand group and put them above the head and then after doing that you rig those to that hand so you drag the same layers you put them all in the same swap set and then now when you click that button or whatever whenever you click that it will go over the head and this is supposed to only apply for hand movement that goes over the face any hand movement that is not going over the face or in the case of arm b is not going over the body is unnecessary to do that so you just need to just stick with how it is and if as the um, um, default how you created it in the first place but if you want to go above the body or above the face then you have to do this so now we can see the hands are working fine and uh, okay that is actually a cycle there yeah, that's supposed to be making the character think and he's like swerving his hand over his chin uh i actually decided against that eventually in the fit in the in the future version of this char character but you could actually do that you could put an in between and it will be smooth there will be transition the transition from one position to the other will be smooth and you could repeat that repeat that while the hands is up and then you could reverse that process and the hand will go down so um, once in a while you go back to your original file that is the Adobe Illustrator file you know, in some people's cases it might be Photoshop which I have strongly advise against but uh, you can go back work on some few things if some few things if some things are not working fine you go back and work on it and that is what I'm doing for this character because I'm rigging this character live some recording so um, I had to be going back and forth from uh, Adobe Illustrator back to uh, character animator and then check if the thing has been fixed and you keep doing that and doing that until you get a perfect character so um, <clears throat> so now i believe what i tried to fix was a hand issue that is actually for the swerving hand the, when it's thinking when the character is thinking so i think i worked on that and that is fine now so you drag certain things just drag it, it around this is a bit complex this rigging process is a bit complex um you can see that's the bug that i eventually had to fix okay but this rigging process is not what you are going to be experiencing in your own case this is a special kind of rigging process that i actually came up with in my years of creating characters which uh which i feel like is it makes my work way easier 
especially when I want to recreate so many characters from one particular character. Like if I'm actually going to be creating a character that looks like Stewie, or I want the, the character to have the same Stewie hand, it's extremely, extremely replaceable, like very, very easy to do. So all I just need to do is just drag this hand, swap set, all the hand set, and then just put it in the new character and then walk around it like that. You could adjust the hand in some cases to fit in that character. Maybe the character is a bit wider or the character is a bit slimmer. Then you could do that. Like that. And it doesn't just apply to baby characters. This hand can be used for like um, for adults too. So yeah, just if you can adjust it, you'll be able to adjust it. Which reminds me, this, if you do not want to go through all the rigor of, of like following this tutorial because this tutorial is actually um, fast um, it's at double speed so you could just go to the site to get this character and like mm, reverse engineer do whatever you want to do poke around and whatever just to see how I actually worked on this character um, the character will be on the site the description will, the link will be in the description just go there and get this puppet and um, walk around or check what I actually did but um, I, I would say you should actually still watch this tutorial to the end to be able to understand what I, or at least get the character and also watch this tutorial to really help you. And the good part with this character is people buy these characters and um, just go about um, using the character directly. But these characters, I made them in such a way that they are extremely, extremely easy to manipulate, to change. So from this TV character, you could create so many other characters. All you just need to do is just drag the eyes. You could drag the eyes closer together, maybe drag the mouth a bit down, and then just draw the head in a different shape. Whatever, just mix up them, some things around, and you'll be able to get a fresh, like a completely unique character for your own experience or for whatever you want to create. Okay, what I'm doing here is the same thing, you just drag in whatever in between. I, I'm tempted to, I'm actually tempted to actually uh, like explain what I'm actually doing. Uh, some professionals in this actually will be able to understand what I'm actually trying to do here. But um, it's, it's actually simple, but I do not want to explain it in this video because this is supposed to be like a time lapse kind of video just to brush through and just explain how I created this character. But basically, what I did was you create an in between, like let's say you want to create a hand from the normal position up until the character maybe raises his hand or it points to somebody. So there's an in between. You cannot just make the character move. You can, but it will not look smooth. But you, you cannot, you are not supposed to just make the hand move from like the default position straight up to him pointing at somebody. There's an in-between. So what I did for my characters is I separated the in-between from the from the start and uh, from the end frame. So there is an end frame, like from there is an the one the normal hand has an end frame and then the IB has all the in-between. So you join that together and then you get an in-between, a hand that moves from the start to the end. So this makes it easy because we repeat in-betweens. So if you are creating this hand pointing or you are creating this hand uh, making a like a gesture that is halfway towards that pointing area too, the in-between are almost similar. So there's no point recreating, making this in-between in every single layer. Like every single time you want the hand to move, then you have to create an in-between. So what I did was you just reference that in-between layer and then you join them together and then it creates that whole thing for you. It creates the whole cycle for you. So now how it works, it makes your work easier because all you just need to do in some cases is just adjust the in-between or adjust the, the main hand and just, and when you're adjusting the main hand, it's just the last frame that you have to adjust, which is which makes it work.
amazing and easy and everything so this is a simple explanation but i will make a tutorial specifically for that just to explain that so basically you test you do whatever you move the character around and whatever you feel like is lacking like this hand you can see that the hand something is wrong with hand which means that i have to fix it so you come in and then you fix those things and just you keep working on it working on it until you get the character to whatever perfection whatever uh, level you want it to be at so um that's basically it the video will continue playing but um i think i'm done explaining this you could watch to the end it will really help you if you watch to the end because at the end i think i tested this character or i'm actually going to make a separate video that i will be testing this character on but um so far thank you for watching please give us a like give us a sub if you want this character you go to the site and you're able to get a copy of this character both the ai file and the um the uh, puppet file so thank you for watching please give us a like it will help us push this video maybe reach more people and give us a sub it will help us and it will also help you to keep up with our new videos um, more video more tutorials like this will be coming out and it will also help us to, to keep us in business to bring you this kind of tutorials in the future so thank you and bye for now